Hello, I just wanted to go through a new feature today, which is the ability to add or generate lists of students in your groups within Oodlu. Um, this is particularly to help younger students where they struggle to create their own accounts, uh, and we may add further features to deal with that for primary um, or elementary, maybe, students. So I'm going to show you how this works now. Um, first of all, you go to your Manage Groups section, which is where you manage all aspects of your groups within Oodlu. Um, and I'm just going to create a new group here, and I'm going to call this Testing Oops, testing imports and click on continue and that's creating me now a new group it's totally empty it's just got me in it so now if I want to I can um, I can add my students and if uh, and if I click on that it gives me by default it shows me the normal way of doing this which is or the the default way of doing this should I say and this is still the recommended way of doing this because it require it doesn't require the um, careful saving and um, transmission of passwords which is so sensitive um, and it's nice and quick and easy. So if, you're, if you've got students who are um, able to do this, then I would recommend that you get them to use the group code root. It's, it's a better way of doing it in, in many regards. However, um, there are times when you want to generate your own or upload your own lists of students, and you can do that now with this second tab here. So if you click on that tab, that takes you to this screen, which to start with might look a little bit intimidating, but actually it's, it's, it's pretty straightforward once you, once you understand what's going on. So this deals with a number of different ways of creating lists of students. You can either um, upload them from a CSV file, that's a spreadsheet file, um, or you can enter the um, usernames and passwords that you wish to use, uh, or you can generate them using the username and password stems, which might sound a bit strange to start with, but I'll explain it. Um, so that kind of gives you three ways that you can use this screen, and we tried to build it so that they, they work in harmony with one another in one screen. So you can download the CSV file, which is like a template file, and if you do that, you get um, you get a CSV that looks something like this. Well, it looks exactly like this, in fact. Um, and yeah, these these are dummy account details. Um, if you, if you try and import these particular ones, they will tell you that they exist already. Um, so um, so you might want to change them. Um, but basically, you just put in your username and password, first name and last name for each of the students that you wish to import into um, into Oodly. So, for example, here we've got a, a, a row here, row number two, which has got a student with the username of demo1, a password of funnel2, and um, then first and last name, um, for last name initial at least, of Johnny and H. So it's worth noting that you should never use a, um, a, a user's student's real name in the username. That's very important. Um, we, that's why we provide you with the first and last name initial fields. Um, and we ask that you confirm that you've got parental permission to use the first and last name initials of a student. If you want to use a username which is um, something that obviously isn't their real name, um, then but know who they are, then, then sometimes uh, teachers choose to use fun names like uh, animal names or or, um, or or just kind of fun names that, that they will know um, uh, uh, is that student and, and maybe you could if you if you want to really um, uh, really don't want to can't add the first and last name initial then um, then you could always create a spreadsheet of your own which has exactly these and you add another line here which tells you what their names are so that's another way of doing it. Uh, anyway, so no for, no real names and username, please. Um, and you'll have to ensure that you've got parental permission for first and last name. Anyway, you, you enter your details for each of the students. Uh, note these are student details, not your own. Um, and then you can click on Upload CSV and select that CSV file. And when you do that, it immediately will read that CSV file in. Um, and it populates the username and password, first name and last name um, options. Now you'll note that because um, because you need uh, inf permission to use um, personal information in here, you'll you've got this checkbox and a warning which comes up or message really. It's not really a warning; it's a message saying that before you can continue, you can't continue at this point. You need to confirm that you've got that permission from the parents. So or permission from whoever is required. Anyway. So um, so that then enables you to have a full list which you can populate. And if you want to, you can now change the items in here. Um, let's say you want to do that, or you want to change the passwords to, uh, um, I don't know, 
ping e3 or something. And you'll notice it validates the password strength as well. So, so we rec strongly recommend you use strong passwords here. Um, okay, so so that gives you a list of three students that you could import. And if I click on check and continue at this point, it's actually going to give me an error here. And that's because, as I said, these usernames already exist. They're just dummy users in my account. You can't really do anything with them particularly, but um, but they exist already. So so you will need to have your own um, users listed in here with your own usernames. So uh, and and obviously you can you can choose to do the import. The other way to do this, of course, is to um, is to just reset this thing um, and use the username and password stems. So let's say you wanted to um, I don't know call them all monkey something. Actually, that's probably not the best thing to use actually, but uh, I'm going to do it here anyway. Um, so monkey, and you'll see that that here when you do that, it gives each of them a unique um, username with a different number attached to them. Um, we've seen instances where students try and guess each other's username and password, so it's quite important that you don't use um, very guessable, um, even within just the group, very guessable username and passwords. Um, certainly it's sensible not to use the same password for all of them, um, because otherwise they'll log into each other's accounts <laughs> and cause mischief. Um, so let's say we're going to make the password um, jungle. So jungle, uh, fungal, <laughs> jungle. And again, it gives unique passwords for those. And it tells me those are weak at the moment because it would like a capital letter included in that as well. So I'm going to include the capital letter and bang, it makes them OK. OK, so um, so, so that's a very quick way of generating um, users. And you, if you want to, you can add further users to that list just by doing that. Um, and if you just rejig these, take a letter on and off them, then it'll also repopulate those. Um, or you can remove them if you just want a few users. So let's say you just want three users or two users or even one user, you can do it like this as well. Um, and then if we want to, you can you notice that the uh, the first and last name are greyed out until I click on I've got permission. permission. Um, and then you can enter um, James H. We capitalise the first letters of your na the names here, so you don't have to keep on holding down the caps lock as well. Um, okay, so that, that creates those two users there. So, so that deals with how we create these users. Basically, you upload them, you use the stems, or you um, type in their names specifically. Let's create a new one here, um, just for fun by typing it in, and we call this one um, Kurt B. It's not a real name, obviously, uh, and we'll give that one a password of Gaba4. Okay, and uh, a name of John. Oops, Smith. Uh, well, he's John Smith, but of course we can't put the whole name in. Um, we just have the initial. So, so we're just we're only ever holding the absolute bare minimum for what we need for you guys to be able to identify the student within the system. No, no more. Okay, so so that that gives us hopefully. Um, a number of unique usernames. I click on continue, and, and once I click on continue, um, it will it will give me that list there, um, which is a confirm a list just a confirmation list so that you can check the usernames. Now, if I had not included um, passwords in here, and I clicked on continue, it will actually generate passwords for me. It's got to include passwords by this point, so it'll generate passwords for you, and it tells you that it's done it. Um, also, if you were to insist on using a weak password, um, it would actually prevent you from continuing if you have a very weak password. Um, if you have um, a weak password but not a critically weak password, then it will allow you to continue but it will tell you that you strong, you're you strongly recommended not to use a weak password and to use a stronger one. It highlights the issue in there. Okay, so let's use strong passwords. Okay, so we've got a um, our list now, and that's all ready and prepared, and it's gone through all the validations so that we know it should work. All that's left to do is click on save, and when you click on save, you just click on save. It then creates a, a CSV file and downloads it. In fact, it's off the screen here, but that's just downloaded a CSV file for me. Um, and if I click on that, um, it shows 
me what's coming up in this CSV file. The, the one that's on the screen in the background is the one I was importing and, and I was mucking around with just now. This one in the middle is the one it's importing, so it shows you what it's what it's going to import. Uh, sorry, what it's just generated that you can look at. And this is for you to store securely. Remember to delete it from your downloads folder. Uh, that's a security risk otherwise. So delete it from your downloads folder and secure it, uh, save it securely somewhere. You can, it's, it's a good idea to encrypt this um, so that you can uh, protect those usernames. You can do that by using something like WinZip um, where you can put the zipped file inside it and encrypt um, the, the zipped file. Um, so, so that gives you that. Um, better still, of course, is just to print it and, and, and destroy the digital record entirely uh, and then just keep that print with you. So um, so there we go. That gives you the option to download them. It's, so it downloads it automatically, but you've also got the option to press the button here to download. And if you do that, it will download it again, which is done in the background, which you can't see there. Um, but to make this flexible for you, we've also given you the option to copy the CSV content to your clipboard or view the CSV content. Okay, so if I keep, copy this to the clipboard, it says it's copied to the clipboard, and then I can open up any text editor that I want to, and I can just paste it in. Um, oh no, that's, that's not done it actually. Should have done. Oh, I'll have to check that bug. I'll, ch I'll check that bug. That should have copied it to the clipboard. Um, and then you can also view, uh, maybe that does it now actually. Yeah, yeah, okay, there's, there's a bug there, I'm going to sort it. Um, but basically you can either you can either view the CSV content in this um, window here, so you can copy and paste it, or you can just copy and paste the clipboard from there um, once I've sorted that little bug out. So that, that gives you the opportunity to grab those usernames and passwords. It's worth saying here that you won't get a chance to do this again um, once the passwords are, uh, are stored within Oodly. Of course, they're stored encrypted. Um, and so it's not possible to extract the same passwords out again. Um, even if we wanted to, we couldn't do it. So, uh, so it's very important that you um, that you make sure that you have a record, a secure record, of the passwords that you've generated here, so that you can give those to your students. Um, but please do concentrate very carefully on the security of those passwords when you do that. Um, and then you just uh, click on close, and that's it. You've got your students now in the list, and you'll be able to set them. Um, your question collections and do all the normal things with them. Anyway, hopefully that's a hopeful overview, helpful overview um, and we of course look forward to hearing how you get on and um, thank you very much.